to the first fanside chat. In case you couldn't tell from the intro and from the top half of this t-shirt I'm wearing, I am talking about So, before I get into this, understand there's going to be spoilers everywhere. I am not going to explain what this movie is about. So if you continue on from here, I assume that either A, you have seen this film, or B, you don't care to see this film, and therefore you don't care about spoilers, or that I'm going to talk about things and you'll have no idea what I'm talking about. So, let's get into it. I have loved this movie since it first came out. So probably when I was around nine or ten, which means that I have loved this film for decades. That hurts just to say it. Mm. So why have I loved this film? Well, I know other people have issues with her, but a lot of it for me has been Sarah. And not so much Sarah as the character, but Sarah as what she represents to me. So, let's take the stages of Sarah, shall we? As a child, Sarah was this type of female heroine that I wasn't really exposed to too often. Because most of the other female heroines I had been exposed to up to that point had been like some of the Disney princesses, which, yeah, they win, but not really because they're battling the big bad, but so much as because someone else is and they've just been a good person and therefore they get rewarded. Um, or Princess Leia, who is a very different character than Sarah. Um, so I remember first watching it and thinking, yeah, I know this girl. She's out there, her imagination is just taking over and she's reenacting things because I would did that. I mean, once this movie out was on VHS and I could get the soundtrack on cassette, I would watch the movie, then I'd put the cassette in and then I'd reenact the entire film for Fatum and I'm not even joking. And sometimes I would drag my younger brother and my younger cousin into my shenanigans. Sorry, not sorry. But I understood Sarah and I felt heard for the first time in a film like this because here is this girl who loved reenacting these things and getting herself immersed in the story that she was really really in love with and people just didn't understand it and she got a lot of flack for it and granted I didn't grow up in the same type of household as her and there wasn't as huge of an age gap between me and my brother as there was Sarah and Toby because my brother and I are about four or five years apart and there's a much wider gap there and my parents were still together so I didn't grow up with a stepmother or losing another parent but I kind of got where she was coming from sometimes and I definitely got the whole annoying younger brother thing <laughs> not that I ever would have wished him away to the goblins but I'm not saying that the temptation would not have been there from time to time Love you, bro. Uh, we get along great now. Then I got into my teenage years, and it was less about, oh, I know this girl, I'm like her, and more of like the whole romanticized version of everything. You know, here's this girl, and she gets to go into this magical land, and she's meeting these magical creatures, and oh my gosh, the ball gown. I was gonna get married in that ball gown if I ever got married and just the whole romantic notion of everything and having this goblin king like do all this stuff to stand in your way and put all of his attention on you and and it was David Bowie yeah oh the romantic notions of it as a teenage girl then I slid into my young adulthood and maybe kind of early to mid adulthood and it became a much different story to me because then it was less about you know we adventure and I I know this girl and the whole oh romantic and more into those those words you have no power over me because they even though I would say them and I would recite them all throughout my childhood and my teen years, they impacted me as an adult, especially as a young woman out in the world on my own for the first time, 
and running up against things that I might not have experienced up until that point because I was very blessed in certain ways. But how those words started to impact me. To look into the eyes of just someone or something that was standing in your way and to be able to say, you have no power over me. And I get it. Even at that age, I was starting to find Sarah a little annoying, but I still understood that she was no more or less annoying than I think a lot of people in that age group, because I think she was probably what the character might have been between 16 to 17, 18 years old, because Jennifer Connelly was around the age of that time. And so I understood, you know, that mindset of a teenager at that age you are sliding into your adulthood and you do think you can do anything and accomplish anything and the world isn't fair and you're just now learning this you know I love that line where she's like you know that's not fair and Jareth is like you say that so often I wonder what your basis for comparison is you know because at that age you don't have a basis of comparison normally unfortunately some people may but most like me did not um, and I appreciate that. I appreciate him calling her out on that. But, you know, as a young adult, I, I was really starting to understand a lot more, you know, here is this young woman who does whine. She does moan. She does complain about things. But she has these obstacles that come up in her way along her adventure. You know, Hoggle telling her she doesn't know things and telling her that she should it and you know the worm as much as I love the little worm and I really wanted to go inside and have a nice cup of tea with it leading her down the wrong path and running into these big scary monsters like Ludo and the knockers that try to keep her from moving forward and the fireies who are all like we're gonna tear you limb from limb isn't that fun those, are, those things are a little dark I'm not gonna lie uh, the Bog of Eternal Stench, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, uh, Sir Didymus standing in her way of crossing the bridge. She runs up against these obstacles. She moans and she whines about them. But the most important thing is she never stops. She doesn't let them lead her back to the beginning. She doesn't let them keep her in an oubliette to be forgotten. She doesn't let them stand in her way. She finds a way around it. And sometimes, just like in life, she chooses the wrong path, but ultimately she gets to her destination. And when she says she has to face Jareth on her own, that's a big moment for me because that is a moment that I think we all have to go through. A moment where you have to face a big bad on your own. Because that's just the way it is. And now as an older adult, the movie means so much more to me as far as looking back on the things that have led you along the way and to the path of where you are now. The obstacles, the things that helped you along, your friends, your colleagues, and saying, sometimes I need you. I may have moved past it, but sometimes I need you. So when Hoggle is sitting there and saying, should you need us for anything? And she says, I need you, Hoggle. I don't know why, but from time to time, I will need you. I get that now. That scene means so much more to me at this point in my life than it ever did at any other stage because there are times where I need those moments. I need those childhood memories. I need those childlike feelings. I need to remember those times where I stood up against something and I moved past it, I defeated it, I won. Or even those times where I stumbled and I fell, but I learned something from it. And that's not to mention the whole junkyard scene where she's getting bogged down by all of her precious, her darlings. I mean, you could pile all this on my back right now and I'd look like that junk lady. There's just so much about this film that means so much at different stages in my life 
And I feel like maybe that is the reason why a lot of people who fell in love with this movie and still love this movie, that's why. And maybe that's not why they're engaging with it, and it may mean different things to them at different stages, but I think any good story that sticks with you for as long as this movie has stuck with me, that is why. So I could go on and on and on and on. I could break this movie down scene by scene for you. I'm not going to do it because we'd be here for hours. Um, but yeah, there's a short fan side chat of why this movie has meant so much to me over the years. Have I ever tried to cosplay a character from this film? Yes, I have. I did try a very sad attempt at a Victorian version of Jareth, which if I'm doing this correctly, because again, I edited this myself, hopefully the picture will show up here, or hopefully maybe it won't, because it was very, very bad attempt. <laughs> I did not do a good job. I will admit that. And any place I wore this, uh, especially the Labyrinth of Jareth Ball, which I was so excited to wear it to. Um, people thought I was cosplaying the Beast from Beauty and the Beast, and I totally get it. I totally, looking at it, 1000% understand that. Um, so if I ever try to attempt a Jareth genderbent cosplay again, um, I will probably do a different silhouette than the Victorian era. Uh, yeah, because this, this is, this did not turn out good. Or maybe a different version of one of his outfits. Um, maybe the one from the Escher scene because, oh, I didn't even talk about the Escher scene, did I? Can I say, going back really quick, how much I love that scene and that song and just having David Bowie sing the words, oh, you turned my world to precious things. the stars from now what? Okay, I won't sing the whole song. I'm really tempted to though. Ooh, do I love that song? I mean all the other songs, yeah, okay, but that one, that one, that scene, just, that was very detrimental to a young girl discovering her hormones. I didn't say that. What? No. Okay, moving on. Yeah, so, Labyrinth my love for it. Um, any other fans out there, if you happen to watch this and would love to leave your comments about why it means so much or doesn't mean so much to you nowadays, please feel free to do so. I'm not going to do the whole thing where I'm pointing below me or around me to click any things. You guys know what to do on here. <laughs> I don't need to tell you. You probably know better than me. So, yeah. Until next time.